Marriage is a calling, a gift from God, but it is nonetheless a gift that you must be ready to receive. Hi everyone, this is God's Girl G, and thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who have returned to my channel for this video, I am going to encourage you that if you have not already to please subscribe. Doing so will ensure that you receive notification of the videos that I upload, which I do on a weekly basis. And during the course of this video, if you hear something that you like, why don't you click the thumbs up or comment below. I enjoy reading all of your comments and I do try to respond accordingly. So let's get into today's discussion. Marriage is a different path for everyone, if a path at all. Knowing that you found your forever person is a wonderful feeling. It may happen quickly or take a more traditional path to long-term coupledom. But if the person that you're with is the one, not only will you notice things about them that make you sure that they are it, you'll also notice some things about yourself have changed. One of the biggest mistakes that people can make is rushing into marriage without going through the process of making themselves ready. If you take serious the idea of marriage, whether for the first time or a remarriage, you must also take seriously the process that will make you a worthy lifelong companion. There are many of you searching for love. And as I said in the intro, marriage is a calling and not everybody will get the call and, and that's okay. But for those of you who have the calling of marriage, many times you can become so focused on finding the right person that you can forget that in the meantime, it is your job to become the right person. To many of you, waiting may seem like a waste, but to God, waiting is preparation. He has a big work to do in both your heart and the heart of your future spouse before he calls you both together. With that being said, I wanna provide eight indicators or signs that you are on the right track or are prepared for marriage. Now, I must say, before getting into these signs, that preparing for marriage should never begin at the engagement or at the altar. It should begin long before that. While I'll cover most of the main areas, which is important to prepare for marriage beforehand, obviously this is not an exhaustive list. This list will not guarantee that even if you adhere or have all of these signs that you will be ready for marriage. Readiness depends upon a number of factors, including your relationship with God, the parties involved, and the circumstances for which the union is formed. There is no complete fail-proof formula for success. So here are my eight signs that you might be ready for marriage. Sign number one, you have a healthy, growing relationship with God. Before you can give your heart to another, you must first give your heart to God. Your relationship with Christ must also supersede any and all earthly relationships. If God isn't number one now, it's only gonna be harder to put him in the number one spot when you get married. Your relationship with God is what changes you from the inside out. And whether single or married, Christ is the best one who prepares us for marriage. Ask him for help and be teachable as he makes you into the man or woman he's called you to be. Then regardless of whether you ever marry, you'll exhibit the traits that matter to him. Sign two, you have learned to love yourself. It is no doubt that our relationship with God teaches us about ourselves. The second greatest commandment is not just a call to love others, but to also love yourself the right way. As Jesus once said, we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, not more than ourselves. 
You can't take care of another if you can't take care of yourself. And that means growing spiritually, caring for our health, and seeking our own personal growth. Being ready for marriage doesn't mean that you decided you need your partner. It means that you realize that you are complete, unique, and a special individual all on your own, and that you want your partner to compliment you, not that you need your partner to complete you. Sign three, you have recognized past hurts. Often we are not aware of the contents of our heart until we are in an unfavorable situation or circumstance. What's in us will seep out of us, spilling onto anyone and everything in our path. This could look like a heated argument or a financial crisis. Unchecked past hurts trigger our unhealed wounds and cause us to respond in ways that are unhealthy. Preparing for marriage means that you take the time to explore the pain of your past in order to enter a marital relationship whole versus fractured. And for those of you who have lived through the pain of divorce, ask yourself the question, what went wrong? Once you've honestly asked yourself that question, you must be willing to take ownership of your part in the failed marriage. After all, it takes two to get married and two to make a divorce. It is important that you find out what caused the disconnect, what happened there. Then take time to heal. Sign four, you are so content in your singleness that marriage no longer determines your identity. If you're looking for marriage as a ticket to lifelong happiness, you might be disappointed. Marriage is filled with seasons, in love seasons and seasons of crisis. Although marriage is a beautiful gift from God, just like singleness, you should not hinge your contentment on being united to someone. Your security should come from God. Philippians 4 and 7 says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Learning to be content in the Lord will help you through the rough patches in your marriage. Furthermore, spouses are meant to be help meets and encouragers. You will make your future spouse's role difficult when you've made a habit of drowning in discontentment. Sign five, you have your finances in order. If your finances are in disarray before marriage, getting married will not solve the problem. It will only make things worse. Do you have a sound understanding of who God is to you? When it comes to finances, do you see God as a spiritual vending machine, a far off cosmic entity, or a loving Lord that seeks your good more than you'll ever know? It's easy to expect to marry someone who's financially solid without trying to be that person yourself. But financial problems can cripple a marriage. So you wanna do your part on building a financial foundation for your marriage. Learning to be a wise steward of money as a single person is a critical trait of someone who's serious about being a good partner. It's not only honoring to God, but to your future spouse as well. Sign six, you are emotionally healthy. And this ties into sign three that we talked about regarding recognizing past hurts. Emotions are tricky. They are a part of us, but relying on them can be problematic. When you are emotionally healthy, you are not only able to process your pain, but articulate and communicate your feelings in a responsible way. This is absolutely vital in order to build strong communication in marriage. If you do not prioritize this area in your life, it will eventually show up in your behavior. Sign seven, you have eliminated questionable others in your life. Let me explain. No future spouse will want to take a back seat to someone else. Great marriages are birthed with exclusivity. A person who is serious 
about laying a strong foundation for their marriage will eliminate all unidentified relationships with the opposite sex. Now, hold up. I want to explain a little bit further. The operative words here are unidentified relationships because those are the ones that can be problematic. If you have a friend of the opposite sex and y'all have been friends for years and it's clearly identified, this is different. We talking about those unidentified relationships. They don't, you don't know what you are. Are they, are they hanging out? They friend, what are they? Yeah, you need to deal with that. And I'ma just leave that right here. Uh, all right, sign eight. You have counted the cost. Because uh, marriage, is, marriage is gonna cost you. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. It's gonna cost you. Marriage is a commitment that should not be taken lightly. For this reason, you would be wise to evaluate possible outcomes you may face. Financial loss, painful arguments, sickness, and even addictions. Now, before you say I do, you need to know that you can commit in both good times and bad because there's going to be both in marriage. Luke 14, 28 says, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Now, I love this scripture because what it tells you is that you must count up the cost and marriage is gonna cost you. So now that you've listened to all eight signs, you need to know that no matter how well prepared you think you are, or anyone tells you that you aren't prepared, there is simply no way you can be truly ready for all the things that marriage could bring. That's because marriage, like life, is unpredictable, uncontrollable, and dependent not only just on your actions and preparedness, but on the actions and preparedness of another. What you need to know is this. If you don't hear me say anything else, Effective marriage preparation cannot happen without God being the one to lead, guide, and shape you. And it still will not happen without a decided effort on your part. Thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye.